Green flag at the back, and we're all set then for the first of three races for the weekend. The Santander K773 to our championship. Lights out, we go racing. Cracking start for the first couple of rows. Equal get away from Hutchinson, but thinks to Bull should get him in front on the inside. Up into turn one, they go. It's a good move up the inside. Beaver dives up the inside of possibly Lee Bristow for fourth. And there's contact in the midfield. Russell Oliver, Russell Oliver, Oliver. Yeah. David Jason, though, I think possibly as well. They've all somehow missed it. One track through the gravel that was possibly Daniel Martin. And I think that's Joe Draper that's at the bottom of the track. He'll be fine. He does. Back into first gear and away he goes. Right down towards the bottom of the field, but into Greatville then for the first stop. Sawyer leads, Hutchinson the second place, Cooper's third, Bristow fourth, Henshaw fifth, Perry's up to P6, and also trying to make a charge up through the top ten already is Alex Jordan in the pink and blue distinctive number 90, number 78, uh, number 90 machine. Sorry, um, he's in the uh, 80 machine, sorry. Up in, in, up in inside the top ten and trying to charge towards the front. This is going to be the, probably the most competitive race of the weekend. Mammoth and field of talented drivers. And look at this, it's almost three abreast down the pit street. This is very tight indeed. Three abreast. Then there's Alan Cooper shoots the gap through the middle of the pair of them. There's wheel to wheel contact into Panic Hill Bend, but Hutchison comes out on top. That was very tense indeed, but somehow Hutchison keeps his foot in it and takes the lead. What a sequence that was into Panic Hill Bend. That was incredibly brave by Alan Cooper trying to go through the middle there into Panic. He's not finished yet. It's the uh, number 71, the man from London. With 78 of Chris Hutchinson, who leads the way ahead of Cooper and Sawyer. The cars that uh, went off at uh, Paddock on the first lap all recovered. Draper at the back after his spin. 91 of Lee Bristow, the reigning champion on the attack in the orange car, trying to take Gordon Sawyer, the points leader, coming into this round off the opening hit. Rounds of the year at Snetterton and Knock Hill in Scotland. Fifth place behind him, we have uh, Don Henshaw. He's running well. Oh no, has he lost that uh, fifth place level? Check as they come through. I think it might be Andy Perry up into fifth position in number 11. Now if they're going to be attacked for the lead this time, Alan Cooper in number 71 moves to the outside. He's trying to go round the outside of Chris Hutchinson into Paddock Hill Bend. He won't get through there. Hutchinson leads up on the brink. Sawyer still third. It is Perry, number 11, up into fifth position ahead of Henschel. Then a gap back to the number 74, James Beardwell, the white car. So Drew Italy go for the second time. Sawyer under fire from Lee Bristow, the orange. Number 91, Alan Cooper determined to continue. Harry Bellina has up the inside, Lee Bristow very late on the brakes there. But it is, can he make it stick? Gordon Sawyer fighting back. He's got that third place. Yes, Bristow hold him off. And now here comes Andy Perry. Great first couple of laps by Perry. He's up in a fourth place. He started back in tenth. And he's now fourth ahead of the points leader, Gordon Sawyer, whose championship lead keeps slipping back. Could well be under threat here. Andrew Perry is not a White Group Academy champion for nothing back in 2015, so he's never going to try and push him back up towards the front. As here comes possibly Alan Cooper, daring as he always is, up towards the outside line, tries to take the high white and handsome line into Brands, into Paddock Hill Bed, but Hutchins is wise to that one. Unless Cooper gets the cut back on the exit, he tries. Hutchins tries to move across, but he's too late. Here comes Cooper with a great run up towards Dru Druids. Hutchins will try the outside to hold on. Brister comes steaming up from nowhere to go right out to the rear of Hutchins' car, but Cooper now takes the lead. Alan Cooper leads into Graham Hill Bend, and Lee Bristow is so, so, so much speed through the corner. Look at the pace he's carrying out of Graham Hill Bend, on towards Surtees, three of them all together. Hutchinson looking up the inside of Surtees, Cooper has to capitulate and lets him have the lead. Bristow almost gets through on the outside line if he tries to get the cut back, but Cooper will be for the time being holding on to second place. Bristow in third, and Andrew Perry now is trying to bring the championship points to Gordon Sawyer with him now, but Sawyer done, seems to try and pull along down the pit straight if he can possibly do so. Here he comes for fourth, also here comes Henshaw for sixth on Beardwell down the outside, and Cooper trying to go around the outside of Hutchison again for the lead of the race. So it's three for the lead, two for fifth, and two for fourth, two for sixth, and from about seventh place downwards, it, that's sorry, eighth place downwards, it's, it's Alan Cooper. So, so, sorry, Kevin Cooper's up to eighth. Gretzinger, Yates, Jordan down 11, and Lark in 12. What a race so far. And we've still got 26 minutes to go, and it's been electric from, from the start. I mean, it would be these the quickest and most competitive case rooms we have here this weekend at Sir Brands Hatch. Chris Hutchinson holding on for dear life in front. It's a 12 wheeled case room for the lead because Alan Cooper and Lee Bristow hanging on in his wheel tracks. They should soon be fine for the lead because Perry. And Sawyer starting to tow up onto the back of them as well, chased by James Beardwell, who's back ahead of Henshaw, somebody running wide onto the uh, grass there. I think that might have been Gordon Sawyer. Yes, he ran, put a wheel onto the gravel there, coming out of Clark. Uh, that's lost him momentum. He's lost him a couple of places. He's down to seventh place now. Everything's going from bad to worse for Gordon Sawyer in this one as he tries to hold on to his points lead. Meantime, here comes Alan Cooper going for the outside. 
in to Druid. Chris Hutchinson holds it at the moment. Just about going to hang on to it on the exit as they head down the hill. It's the left hand of Graham and this is where Lee Bristow is stronger. He stays third at the moment. Then we've got Perry in fourth place. Beardwell is up to fifth. It's Henschel sixth. Sawyer seventh. Tom Grensinger, the former short oval mini stocks racer, is eighth. Ninth behind them, we have, I think that's David Yates and Kevin Cooper rounding out the top ten. Superb race so far. It's just so back and forth all the way through. There's basically everything changes every single second. As we come down the pits, Rahach there tries to fend. Cooper goes to the outside line again. They almost bang wheels. Cooper really wants to be so daring. He tries to make contact every time he goes through. Not deliberately, of course, but they almost bang wheels again. They're so close. Hutchison back up the inside and holds onto the race lead. Now this brings Lee Bristow to pray. Cooper will like, defend on the out in, at inside line, but that won't stop Bristow trying to make an outside move. Thinks about it, holds on for the time being, if he can, has to slot back into line. But look at Perry and Beardwell, and also in the mix there too, he's Don Henschel in sixth position. He's won a race a couple of times in his career, and he did, did so at the Catering Festival, I think, last year, at, um, no, sorry, a couple of years ago at the season end at Donington Park, so he knows how to run at the front. Side by side for seventh now as Gretzinger pushes Gordon Sawyer down another place. So Gordon Sawyer having a nightmare race so far, he's marching towards the back of the top ten. And for the points leader, it's not going well. No, it certainly isn't. Gordon Sawyer slipping further and further away as here come the leaders. What's Alan Cooper going to do this time? Meantime, Tom Gretzinger set the fastest lap of the race last time around. Is Cooper going to go for the outside again? Yes, he is. Now fakes back to the inside. Are we going to see any fastest lap this time? Doesn't look like it. Leaders go up towards Druids once again. Still with 23 and a half minutes of this fabulous race to go. Five, six of them for the lead now. They're starting to bottle up behind Chris Hutchinson here. Is Bristow going to have a look down the inside into Graham Hill then? No, Alan Cooper attacking and defending at the same time. And now Bristow gets the better exit from Graham Hill then. Along the Cooper straight down towards Surtees, the left-hander. Bristow all over. Alan Cooper like a rush here, into McLaren. This is letting uh, Chris Hutchinson get away slightly because Cooper is having to defend. Then next through we have Perry, he's got Beardwell in the white car on his tail now. And in behind them is John Henshaw in the number 19. Cooper will try again into Paddock and Henshaw having a look at uh, Beardwell here for fifth place. Beardwell holds on, so they're separating into two groups of three, two trios now. Sawyer seventh ahead of uh, Gretzinger in the 48, a former Academy race winner. Here they come around Druids again. Still Hutchinson. I'm going to change there for fourth place. Well, uh, Don Henschel runs out wide onto the grass on the exit of Druids. This could allow Gordon Sawyer to make up a place. It's Henschel that seems to be having a handling issue there. His car sliding about a bit as they head uh, down the Cooper Strait. Perry under fire from uh, James Beardwell for fourth position now, with the worry of uh, Henshaw on his tail having been removed, he can go on the attack, and talking of attacking Lee Bristow, still all over the back of Alan Coop. I think one person we need to watch out for is the blue and green car, which is at the back of this uh, sort of third train of cars, which is Russ Oliver, because anyone looking at the timing screens will notice that the previous lap, the, that we've, not this lap we completed, but the one prior to that, he actually was the fastest man on track, and actually to set, his, to set a personal best. Now, he's done it twice in a row now, he's set the fastest second sector of anyone on track in the entire race. He's done a 53.569, and genuinely, he is lapping quicker than every single car in front of him at the moment. So Ross Oliver, who actually had that sort of misdemeanor and spun at the bottom of Paddock Hill Bend on the opening lap, is on the comeback charge as Henshaw goes to try to defend on the outside line. Gretzka runs wide on the exit, David Yates will try and get involved in the mix as well, just behind him. And now we've got, I'm watching um, Oliver, he's gone past um, Daniel Martin, he's now looking to try and get past Alex Jordan. Oh, these two are close, they know each other from 270 yards, so they, that's a good, good clean move if you can try and make it stick and try and get it down the pit straight. And the thing is though, the interesting thing is, Russell, he's got time to catch these, these, all these cars in front. He can pick them up one by one if he can make it happen. Top three down the pit straight all together. Hutchison, Cooper and Bristow. Then Perry leads fourth place from Beardwell, Henschel, Sawyer and then Yates. Gretz again eighth place. Here comes Ross Oliver down the outside of Alex Jordan. He's trying, he's trying. He's got yes, it. he's done it. Fantastic. You can tell Ross Oliver's on the comeback charge. He's up to 12th now. No, uh, yes, 12th now. The 11th, so I'm trying to look at where he's obviously. Uh, uh, Jordan's having, I think, a transponder problem because his car hasn't come, he's, hasn't come up on Yeah, his transponder is being timed manually, that's where, where the confusion's coming from. But uh, the battle for fourth starting to intensify now. Watch for Don Henschel back on the tail of um, 
the white car of James Beard. Well, they've got Gordon Sawyer up behind them. Sawyer has a look up the inside into McLaren. It's almost side by side on the exit. Knows Don Henschel holds the place. So here come the leaders, three of them over the line together. Alan Cooper's going to try his tactic of going to the outside again. He leads on the race leader, Chris Atchison. He's got him! Round the outside of the paddock, a superb piece of drive by Alan Cooper. Chris Hutchinson is fighting back on the run up to Druid and Lee Bristow says, look, you're going to battle, I'll go around the outside of both of you. Three wide into Druid. Is this going to work? Here they come. Out of Druid. Hutchinson holds the lead. He got the inside line into Druid and they stay in order. Cooper back to second and Lee Bristow in third place. This is letting the fourth place tow, led, led by Andy Perry, close up on them. Then it's Beardwell, Sawyer and the rest of them. Fantastic. Alan Cooper, if he'd made that stick, that would have been the move of the day. Do you know what the best thing is? We're only a third of the way through. We've still got just under 20 minutes to go. This is, <laughs> I think the phrase is rubs hands with glee because this is the, this is the best race of the day so far, of the weekend so far at least. And these guys are putting on a phenomenal show so far ever since the start of the race. Here comes Cooper again to the outside line, wheel to wheel with Hutchison again, down towards the, he's only once, he'll try again, he's tried, he almost made it stick on the first time, but lost out by going running wide on the exit. He can't get it done this time around. He looks for the switch back on the exit, Hutchison will try to defend, but he wasn't quick enough to tr close the door, and up the inside goes Alan Cooper into Druids, and he has got the move done, so Alan Cooper back into the lead, but Hutchison won't allow him to have that for much longer. Now what's interesting also is, Russ Oliver, I'm keeping track of him. He's now gone ahead and displaced the car in front. I think that was Andy Laholter in 77. He's passed him. His next target is going to be Alan Cooper, because he's back into the top 10. Then he'll start to try and attack the top 10. And like I said, he's back into P11, and with 80 and a half minutes to go, look at his pace. He's done a 53.511. Genuinely, he is lapping just about quicker than everyone else in front of him, apart from Gordon Sorry, but personal best in. Oliver is flying out there. There's a real chance he could get up there possibly. I think he could get a top five at this rate if things work out like that, like that way. Neil Hutchinson looks to the outside lines to try and make a move that Cooper tried. Oh, it's close between Beerwell and Sawyer as well. Beerwell and Sawyer wheel back into Cladder Kill Bend. Sawyer has the inside line and holds on. Meanwhile, the leads come back up towards Druid. It's Cooper with Hutchinson to the outside. Bristow watches on and tries to make an opportunity happen if he possibly can. Perry's in there in fourth place, followed by Gordon Sawyer in fifth. Then it's then Beerwell. Henschel in 6th position, David Yates in 7th, Brent Singer 8th, and ninth place is now, um, in, uh, yes, yes, in ninth place is um, uh, Oliver. 77 that is behind them I think. Yeah, and Oliver, amazingly, has already caught, <laughs> he's, he's already caught Alan, and so he's answering, he's past Cooper now behind Andy Laholt, he's caught Andy Laholt. It's a similar looking car then, first Yeah, that's, that's what we got confused, because Laholt and Alan Cooper are very similar looking cars, they've both got dark coloured cars with sort of classic green roll bars. Meanwhile, Hutchinson has been shuffled back to third now. We didn't spot that because we see that uh, Lee Bristol's got past the second place. The Hutchinson could be under attack for fourth place now. Uh, <laughs> Oliver has got past Laholt. He's now up to tenth place. He's into the top ten and continuing his march towards the front. This is a phenomenal drive. If he can get himself as high as the top five, I'll be very impressed. Well, here they come out of Druids then and the uh, three leaders have been caught here. It's Cooper from Bristow. Then we've got Hutchinson, he's almost being pushed by Perry now. We've got Sawyer fifth, Beardwell sixth, seventh is Henshaw, then it's Yates, Grensinger, and Olivant is next in the 55. <laughs> That's very, very close, because they're almost going by side. Now, I think it was Sawyer and Hutchinson in the mix as well, with also and Perry, as they come into, uh, was there also like some Tai Chi moves in kind of like, well, my hands kind of like just watching. I thought that was the Macarena. <laughs> It was something. Anyway, it was something. <laughs> up towards <laughs> Panic Hill Bend. This, this is what the race is doing to us, these guys. Oh, Hutchison trying to go around the outside of Hend of Andrew Perry, but he can't do it. That's why that was Sawyer go around the outside. Henschel's got the cut back on Beerwell on the exit Panic Hill Bend. But the man I'm still watching, I keep I'm talking about it, but I know, but his pace is genuine. I keep watching Russell Oliver. Watch for the blue and green cards currently in about ninth place. Tenth place at the moment, watch for him. Henschel sets the fast snap of the race. Goodness me, where's that come from with Don Henschel? He's put in a 53.396. Well, that, that was not. So he's now on the back of James Beerwell and his pursuits for the uh, for the possible top five places. Ooh, Perry now attacking. That's Gordon Sawyer. They're side by side. All banging wheels as they head into uh, Clearway's corner. Sawyer holds in front. This, this race is amazing. And we only just hit halfway. It's 15 and a half minutes to go. This is an electric race, and there's still plenty of time for it all to develop even further. Fantastic. Now here goes Lee Bristow. What's he going to do as they go into paddock here? Not close enough to attack Alan Cooper. 
for the lead. Hutchinson still in third. They're starting to string out very slightly now. Where's Oliver got up to? He's got ahead and he's made up another place. He's ahead of Tom Grensinger. And again, fastest man on track. Personal is 53.4. Russ Oliver is a man on a mission. He's P9. He's now in the, he's the blue and green car. He's now behind eighth place David Yates. His next target after that's going to be the battle that's going on between Henshaw and Beardwell. I seriously think with the time he's got, he can get into the top five. I don't want to predict a podium or, dare I say, a win, but that's far too much. But let's just wait and see. Top five, I'll be impressed, but let's just see what progress he makes. This could be an interesting race with the 14 and 43 quarter minutes. We just, just got past halfway. There's plenty of time for it all to happen. Okay, let's see what Lee Bristow does this time. And the orange car, he's in the slipstream as they come up over the start finish line. He's going to be mindful that Chris Hutchinson is there as well, though. They head into Paddock. The order does not change this time. What's going to happen on the run? up towards Drew, it's Lee Bristow sizing up Alan Cooper ahead of him, Hutchinson just playing the waiting game behind them, but towing up behind them, that's Gordon Sawyer, he's got ahead of Andy Perry, I missed that, up into fourth position, so Gordon Sawyer is uh, closing up again after his uh, rather poor start this race, where he dropped back a few spots, fifth is Perry, the next group is headed in sixth place by Henschel, ahead of Beardwell, it's Yates, Olivant, Gretzinger, and uh, the rest of them, that's uh, possibly uh, Andy Laholt in behind them. Oh, great. I think it was Laholt trying to make to get past uh, Gretzinger, but Gretzinger shut the door there. Now, this is intriguing, though. We've got four from the lead now. We've got now it's Cooper leading, but we've now got Bristow Hutchison, Gordso watching on. Bristow goes to the outside line. Where's Hutchison going to go? Will he go inside line? No, he sits back for the time being. He thinks discretion is the better part of Valor. Decides to sit back and assess his that's another move. Meanwhile, but Oliver thought about looking up the inside of Henshaw and thought that David Yates and thought, no, nah, I won't try just yet. Bristow's going for the outside, it's a Druids. And also look at Sawyer on the outside of Hutchinson, it's two by two, hurrah on the exit of Druids. He holds on for the time being, but Bristow is in there in second place, might look up the inside. Oh, very oh, close. I really, I really thought they were going to clip wheels there. How is there not contact? And now, of us with all of that now, Dave, it's five for the lead now, because look at Andrew Perry, he's in the mix there too. Yes, Perry hanging on as well. A great start to the race by Perry has carried him up into the leading group. Lee Bristow, how how he and Alan Cooper did not click wheels and spin out there at Graham Hill Bend, I don't know. Great close racing. They just must know the dimension of these cars down to the millimetres now how they can fit them together on the track. Now Bristow goes for the outside trying to play Alan Cooper at his own move that he was using earlier on. He won't get through there. He'll go for the cutback once again. He's still got 12 and a half minutes to go. Up the hill towards Druids, which side's he going to go? Well, Hutchinson having a stab up the inside here. Sawyer's there as well on their tails. Is Bristow going to try and get the inside line away? No, Cooper will be expecting that. He'll keep the inside into Graham Hill Bend. Perry's right up with them. There's five of them. Now they really are minus stern as they come out of Graham Hill Bend. Down the Cooper straight. Don Henschel watching on in sixth position. If any one of them makes the slightest mistake, there will be a dramatic change. This is like... The uh, 1981 Spanish Grand Prix when Gilles Villeneuve was heading a group of five <laughs> around the Harama circuit in similar circumstances. The only thing is, that happens almost in every catering race though, because it's, it's, it's nice to hear what Spanish Grand Prix every single catering race, so it's, yep. that's the best thing about it. So here they come, Bristow again, wheel to wheel, almost dead heat across the line, wants to get between them across the line. 24 thousands of a second, no biggie. So Costa come into the, uh, come into Panic Hill Bend. He's got the cutback, here we go. He has, he's got the cutback up the inside, he's going to try and make a move. Also, we've got Kay Hutchinson trying to fend off Sawyer as he looks to the outside line. Oh, and if he's, if Cooper's not careful, then does Hutchinson every opportunity, slides up the inside and takes second place. Oh, Sawyer spins! Was Sawyer's that caught? I'm not sure. It, he scatters, sends the car scattering every which way, but he rejoins down outside the top ten now. Which means that's great. And also look at this, he's brought Don Henschel into the mix here now because we've lost one car drops off the train. Now Don Henschel thinks, right, my turn now, fifth position, let's see what I can do to move up. He actually holds the fast snap of the race, 53.396. And what how long have we got left? 11 minutes to go, just about, just over it. Bristow leads, Hutchinson second, Cooper third, Perry fourth, H Henschel fifth, and then we've got sixth, seventh, I think. Yes, that means that that's brought up to eighth place now is um, Russ Olivant. Next time, still trying to get past David Yates. Ooh, and Gretzinger and Hull are pretty close. Well, it's wheel to wheel into Paddock Hill Bank. Couldn't make it stick. But uh, Gretzinger behind Laholt now. Henschel's having a go at Andy Perry for fourth place now. As Bristow leads. Hutchinson second. I said if any one of them made the slightest error, there'd be a dramatic change. Well, uh, Sawyer's down to about down to 14th place now after that spin. Third is still uh, Cooper. They've got away slightly from Perry and Henschel. So it's three for the lead now. 
Sixth behind them is Beardwell, then we've got in seventh place Yates, eighth is Oliver, Grensinger in ninth, Laholtz rounding up the top ten, I think. Yes, it's Andy Laholtz now. I keep getting him and Kev Cooper mixed up, I do apologise, <laughs> such similarly coloured cars. Yeah, like I said, they're both dark coloured cars with sort of bright coloured roll bars and very, very similar colours, so if we're getting confused, we apologise. Ten minutes to go then. Back into Paddock Hill Bend. Oh, it's close to fourth and fifth is Perry. Look at that Henshaw go around the outside of Perry if he can make it stick. He's got it. Why is he has got it? Fantastic. Dom Henshaw up to fourth then. Is a podium on the cars possibly? Is it too soon to speak about that? We'll wait and see. Can he catch the top three? Or then he starts to try and pull away in their efforts. Henshaw will be a little wide on the exit of uh, Druids, up down, down towards uh, Grave Hill Bend. Oh, and Perry was close, he's almost contact, he was bumped yeah, to the rear end. I think he has clipped the back of him there, but they survived that. And Henshaw won't like that, he'll be a little bit put, put out by that one. Gretzky a little sideways on the exit, down now towards Circus of the Cup once again. He's now fine for fourth place now, because Russell still cannot find a way past David Yates. He's been stuck behind him for several laps now. He has to try and make a new summit, but he might be quick enough here off the corner. If he can get a good enough exit, because he, Yates won't have the toe, all of it, all of it will. And the straight there come, he closes back in, here he comes. He's come back across the line, still the top three as it was, back into the complex again. All the things about the inside line switches back to the outside, but no move doing so far there. So back into still eighth place, but the leaders know to tell. Hutchison would D love to get another race victory here. Cooper looking back up the outside again into Druids. No move, little wide there for Bristol on the exit. Much to the tighter exit if he could down towards Great Hill Bend. Fourth and fifth now between Henshaw and up the inside is Andrew Perry, he tries to leave Cooper the run. Cooper's gone through the second as well there. Oh, it's close, and also there's almost contact for Perry, so whilst um, Cooper goes through for second place, fourth, fifth and sixth, it's all kicking off between <laughs> Henshaw, Perry and Yates. So if it's Henshaw, uh, Perry and Beardwell, Yates and Oliver are in the mix there as well. So it's now fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh and eighth all together, but the top three, what is this intriguing? Because Cooper and Patch the battle so much, Bristol's starting to pull away now, he did a small bit of a gap, is that going to be critical? And away goes Bristow, it's side by side, once again Cooper and uh, Hutchinson rejoining their battle that was for the lead earlier on. Lee Bristow is getting away in the uh, number 91, the orange machine. The man from Aylesford, local to us here at Brand Touch, that's only about 20 minutes down the road, so uh, very much on his uh, local circuit. Last year's uh, first ever 310R champion. Lee Bristow continues to lead the way. Henshaw next through, then Yates and uh, Olivet. Ever since Olivet based the attack, attack off the back of the cars in front, it's... Uh, I don't know, we've yeah, we've lost somebody there. No, we, no, 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 we've lost James Beardwell. We've lost Beardwell and we've lost, lost Perry. Yeah, there's somebody spun up there at Druids. Ah. That's not one of them, I don't think. No, I don't think so. But we've lost. Yeah, we've got yellow flags at Druids. I, yeah, I, I looked away for two seconds there to look in the program. Because oh, that's typical. Yeah, if our CCTV cameras actually had the, had the, the, the thing on uh, Druids, we would have seen that. But both, it's, I, we're going to presume that Perry and Beerwell are both off at Druids. We think. If you've got that wrong. Apologies. Now that this is intriguing. Uh, uh, Joe Draper's got a five-second penalty for tracking the miss. He's been picked yeah, up times by. Dr. Palmer's um, pressure pads on the exit of either Paddock Hill Bend or Greg Hill Bend. He is back out on the left hand side. So Ross Holman now, and he's in charge up the order, is now to sit. So I predict him a top five. He's only going to get past that pesky David Jakes, and he can get through to fifth position if he can. Also, Don Henshaw's not too far away either. So he up to fourth. If he can get past both of them, they're very similar looking cars, both um, Henshaw and Yates. And he's got a great run. He's really close he's ever been there, next to the, um, the right hand out through Clark Kerr. This could be his opportune chance to get fifth position. Will Yates, how will Yates defend it? Here comes Oliver to the outside. Hey, Yates tries to move him across to the edge of the track if he possibly can. It's going to be close. Yates tries to go back up the inside if he possibly looks for it. New fast tap in the race around the Cooper, by the way. Now, Oliver couldn't make it stick, and he has to sit back and look for his other options now. Well, there's Beardwell. James Beardwell's not going again. He's been into the pits, so uh, I'm not quite sure what's happened there. Now, who's the other car that was involved there? That would, that, that, that would have been on the floor. Um, and Andy Perry, Perry. yeah, he's Perry. dropped down to 13, so he had a spin, so presumably they made contact and Beardwell called into the pits to check the car. He's still running, but he's almost a lap behind. Yeah, looks like it, so just to kind of put the piece of the puzzle together for that one. Uh, so I, look, I looked away at something in the programme for two seconds, and in the, those two seconds that happened, typically. Yeah, it's like you can change your cage from racing. Uh, so up towards the beard, well that's just intriguing, he's now lapped down, he's come back out of the pits. But what's he come out in front of? The lead battle, this is going to be intriguing, and effectively he's on roughly leader pace. So of course he'll get blue flags, but at the same time, 
pace he'll show will be quite intriguing to see if he is a catalyst in what's going to go on with these leaders. Now, 4th, 5th and 6th looking pretty static at the moment, although it could change at the drop of a hat because you've got Henschel, Yates and Oliver. Oliver closes back over breaking into Graham and Benz. Nothing doing just yet, but he's keeping close. It, it, I, I, th I sense he wants to try and dive up the inside into, into Graham and Benz, but every single time he, he thinks about it, Yates has got the line covered, so nothing just yet. And if you look at both of those cars, they look practically identical, both Henschel and Yates' cars. They might be from the same stable, possibly, but... I'm not, I'm not going to look in the program again, I'll miss something. <laughs> but um, into the right-hander again. And all that's got that, got that very, very close sort of margin between the two of them, the fifth and sixth, like we did before. He goes back across the line. Now is the final few minutes of the race. So I think it's calmed down a bit now, unfortunately. The race is sort of just sort of um, stagnated a bit in terms of not being as frantic as it was before. Um, not yeah. if you're Tom Grensinger or Alex Jordan. No, because uh, Alex Jordan actually a good run from Alex Jordan, really, because he started back in 13th place. He's up to... Uh, where is he now? We'll have to work out in a minute because his transponder isn't working. <laughs> yeah. Ah, there we go, 7th. He's up to 7th. So up six spots. Good run from him so far. I think, I, I, think he, I, I think he must have been a bit disappointed in qualifying. But actually he might go down to 8th in a minute because he's under attack now from... Um, that's Andy Laholt. In fact, they're two very similarly, very similarly coloured cars. He's down to eight because Grensinger's uh, back ahead of him as well. He went, oh, yes. wide, he went wide and uh, drew it. He might go as though it's tenth because he's not careful. Meanwhile, Russell has finally got past David Yates. He's finally got rid of him. So he's both got, through, got past him there. So now his next target. Him in the last four, five few minutes. Can he possibly catch Don Henschel for fourth? Uh, Bib was back in the pit lane. He's obviously not happy. Someone's tracked into the gravel. But gets back out. That's on the edge of clearways. Before Clark Curve. I think that's that possibly... Alan Cooper, I think he was. That car with the green roll bar, I think that's Alan Cooper. It is Alan Cooper, yes. Kevin he's, Cooper. Oh, sorry, Kevin Cooper, sorry, my apologies. I must give it Alan Cooper's fans a fright there for leading the race. Uh, now, this is interesting because Alan Cooper's caught Lee Bristow, and Chris Hutchinson is there in third place, he's not too far away. This lead battle's not over yet because Bristow's lead that he once had has been demolished, and Hutchinson's still there, so there's still three minutes to go. This could go either way of uh, any three ways here. Bristow, Cooper, or Hutchinson. Here we close back up again. You can see this change in the blink of an eye. I'll have to watch out for this one. Well, here they come then. Three minutes to go. Across the line to complete their 30th lap. Alan Cooper's going to try again. Goes to the outside as he always does into Paddock. The Bristow about a caterham length ahead as they head down into the dip. Then up Halewood Rise. Up towards Druids. Chris Hutchinson just lurks behind them. Still Russ Oliver to able to catch the fourth placeman Don Henschel. He had two blue and white cars in fourth and sixth. You say that, but he is he's now supposed to be he is a bit closer than he was before. He's close to him in every corner in the top. Oliver's in the last lap actually, he was a full half a second quicker than Don Henschel, so he really has got the pace on him. And again, compared to the cars in front, he is quicker than it's just this case of it's a shame it's almost too little too late in terms of, you know, he's, he's kind of strong too late because you know he's quicker than the cars in front that are battling amongst each other, but just he needed more progress to try and get up, get up, get up in front and possibly um, Don Hirsch and David Yates could quick as we can make his way up through the order. Here he comes to the outside now of Henshaw for fourth place after that spin of lap one, remember. Down the outside, picking hold onto the line, he tries it. Oh, he could do it again if he's confident enough. Oh no, no he's not quite. Right. I thought he was going to run into the gravel there for a second. I thought he'd uh, made a mess of paddock. Speaking of recoveries, Gordon Sawyer is the fastest lap of the race, 53.164, back in ninth place. And guess what's happened as a result of that running wide? David Yates has got back ahead of Russ Oliver <laughs> after all that. <laughs> Must be cursing himself, not again. He's going to try to get past him though, but he's running out of time. He's got, he's got about a minute and a half to go now. So we'll wait and see what he can do there. Right, leaders back into the complex. I think we're going to get two more laps. I think two more laps. We've got one minute 18, yeah. Two more laps then to decide who wins this first of three. Santander Cage from the 7-3-10R Championship race. It's either going to be Bristow. Yeah, don't forget, this is just two-thirds of the entry. We've got two more races for this lot to come yet. Oh, yes. So, here we go. Into the... Yellow flag, somebody's off. Ooh. Who is that in the gravel at uh, Paddock? It's the number 10 car That's of David, David Bevan. Uh, deep in the gravel, so I don't I think... Uh, he was running in last place, so that's... Uh, not affected any of the lead buttons, his race is over. Crucially, that's put yellow flags down at Paddock Hill Bend. It's, it's very deep in the gravel, but still, the yellow flags warranted warranted even so. The Hutchinson's back, trying to close back in, he put in a fast, fastest first, first, first sector, but he's too far away, I think, at this point. So, 
I think now, unfortunately, it's between Bristol and Cooper here. Paul Man Hutchinson has dropped away too much, I think. And also, Oliver can't catch back towards David Yates. And Yates, man, just closed up the head shot here. So, on to start the final lap of the race. And this should be very intriguing now. There's yellow flags. I've done a bit withdrawn there because Nick David Bevan's out of the car now. So, no more yellow flags. This is for the race victory. Oh, Cooper almost well, makes contact. There. Almost makes the If he did, it's very, very close indeed up for the mix. Up, now, up the hill once again. Remember, if these two make a mistake here, punches us in prime position to pounce if he can. He's a little couple of seconds away, but he'll sit and watch this happen. So let's watch this and learn on this fast final lap. Bristow holds the inside line now down towards Great Hill Bend. Cooper switched to the inside very quickly, but is that too quick for Bristow a little bit? Well, not quite. He's just meant held the grip. He's so good at keeping the, keeping the speed all the way through the corner from start to finish. Bristow holding on. Cooper's in the mix as well, but I think possibly Dave's going to run out of time, run out of places because they come out up, up to the final couple of the horses. Try to scoop might get a good run off the corner if he possibly can. Bristow may have this, or oh, has he? Here they come. Here they come. Up to the line, Alan Cooper. Is he going to do it? It's going to be a photo finish. Cooper! Yes, he's got, got it. it! Alan Cooper got him by 44 thousandths of a second on the line. That's unbelievable. And here comes the next thing. comes Oliver on David Gates. Can he get it on the line? No. No, he can't get it on this side. So he just misses out. So Cooper snatches the win from Bristow by 44 one of a second after half an hour. He's been stronger on the outside line on this circuit, particularly on the home straight and into Paddock, all the way through this race, and he knew exactly where he could beat him. It's also it's, it's a slightly flatter surface, a slightly more level surface on the outside. That's the reason why I took advantage of that. But guys, that was a super half an hour. Give him a round of applause if you're out the circuit. Great job for the 310Rs. And the best part of it is, there's two more of the races from these guys still to go tomorrow. And Can our voices survive it? it? I'm not sure, we'll have to wait and see if we can try it. So, on that basis, we have to very quickly sign up because it is one minute before curfew. So, let's quickly run through one of the top three. Cooper, Bristol, and Hutchinson, you can sign tomorrow.